Author's Corner, Lyle C. Summers joins us. His book, Memories of My Soul, and this is a book that has 32 original poems. There's five different categories, very unique, very nostalgic. He talks about all kinds of things in his uh, poetry, and he's led such an interesting life. I love the cover. There's a couple of cows. It looks beautiful. I could just lay right down there in the middle of the grass. It's, uh, it, it really is memories of, the, of my soul worthy when you look at the cover. Lyle, thanks for coming on. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about the farm and what that meant to you as a kid, because you grew up on the farm and then you went back to the farm. Tell the listeners about that journey. Well, growing up on the farm was was a, a wonderful experience until our mother passed away. And things got, uh, were just different without her, but but we all survived, and uh, we had to, lots of dairy cows, just like those on the cover of the book. And uh, it was quite a journey. I I did uh, all the sports I could find in high school, joined the Marine Corps after high school, and one quarter of college, and then after the Marine Corps, three years, I was fortunate to be in the Marine Corps when there was no wars going on. So I don't have any more stories for which I'm grateful. But uh, I came back to the farm, worked a few part-time jobs, and then my father, who was running the farm with my brother, decided he needed to retire because of health problems, so my brother and I bought the cows, rented the farm, and we were partners for about four years. Turned out the farm wasn't uh, big enough or profitable enough for two families. We were both married and had kids, and uh, I had the GI Bill, so I went back to school, got a uh, associate degree at Riggs College, which is now BYU Idaho, and uh, then got a bachelor's and a master's degree at Utah State. Yeah, and you let me jump in here. You've led such an interesting life, chief economist, division of water resources, uh, all the time that you spent there, and you think of agriculture, and that brings us full circle to you know the cover of, of the book and how you grew up and how you were able to apply all that and to use that GI Bill. And you talk about memories of my soul and these poems. Do you think what you went through, the things that you did in, in life, did that rattle around in your head and then come out through poetry in later years? That's uh, a good way of saying it, because that's just about uh, exactly what happened. It's been uh, exciting for me to to see this come out into a book that, that reflects who I am and what I am. And... Uh, through it all, we got uh, active in our religion, the Church of Jesus Christ, the Latter Day Saints, and that has been a exciting journey, also. Yeah, and in the book, as I said at the top, you have five categories, and in in one of the categories, you know, like the third section of the book is motivational. What did you want people to take away from that section, the motivational section of your poems? Well, that's pretty much what I grew up with and what I believe. That, uh, you know, we have to have the values. Values are very important. 
And uh, that's what that section is about. It's mostly values and uh, religious beliefs. Yeah. The um, it's interesting in in saying that you know your division of water resources and what that has meant to your life, and then you think of being on a farm and how water is so significant there. You have a poem called "The Water Crisis," and it's so interesting. The beginning you say, "Water is king in this dry land where wind and sun move money and sand." At a conference on water, I could not miss. The lunchtime speeches went something like this. And you talk about, you break it down, you talk about like a politician. Water is our our lifeblood. And you say the gentleman's bluff. I think that is one of the best poems that goes on and describes so much that's in memories of my uh, soul. And we see today how water is obviously so significant to our lives. And as an engineer, what are you concerned about with as far as water is concerned? Well, first of all, let me correct you. I'm uh, not an engineer. I'm an economist. Oh, economist. That's right, economist. Sorry. (laughs) And, uh, well, that's, I don't know, as an economist, I get a little different slant on things. You know, what makes sure the benefits of a a water project, if you're developing water or fixing your system so that it works better, there's always the economic question. Will the improvements pay for themselves? So it's interesting with farmers when I meet with them, and I did meet with farmers throughout uh, Utah and Wyoming, that uh, they are experiencing the same kind of things that I experienced as a farmer. So it was, it was wonderful to sit down with the farmers in in an irrigation company and help them figure out a a water project for them that would improve their system and would have paid for itself and those kind of things. So it was, that was the meat of what I spend most of my time doing as a a water economist. Yeah. You know, and and, um, as I mentioned before, and as a chief economist, in the poem where you break it down from different eyes, which you do have a portion where you talk from the engineering point of view, and of course from the economist point of view, and I, I love this line, you say, now the value of water depends a lot on where you are and how much you got. A glass of cold water on a hot, dry day in the desert is worth what you have to pay while another gallon more or less is not worth much amid a flood's big mess. Wow. Um, how long did it take you to write that poem? Well, it didn't take long. I, <laughs> I'd been to several of those meetings, you know, in my career. So there was, what goes on there was pretty much, uh, on top of my mind, and I had an assignment to, from my boss at work to write uh, do a report on the uh, economics of the water situation at that time. So that was what I was doing when this poem, The Water Crisis, just kind of poured out onto the page, and, and it was, I was amazed at how Yeah, it flowed. It's def- it de- you know, pardon the pun, water wise, but it definitely flowed. The name of the book again is "Memories of My Soul." We're speaking with Lyle C. Summers. You can get the book on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, of course, wherever books are are sold. What do you hope people take away from reading your poetry, getting this, and picking it up at any point? What what uh, what do you hope they take away? Well, I hope they uh, enjoy reading it. I find uh, with some po- poems, books of poetry, in the modern day are not very fun. I've tried to make this fun. It's fun. It's something I've enjoyed. So I hope they get uh, a little bit of entertainment. From it, I hope they get some insight into uh, things like water and things like religion. And uh, 
the things that are in the book. I just would be delighted if someone would come up to me in two or three years and say, I read your book and it really helped me get through this problem that I'm having. Well, that's basically... I yeah, that's it. Fire. Yeah. Yeah, the takeaway, touching, you know, touching someone's heart, definitely filling them up. All right, so pick up this book, Memories of My Soul, Lyle C. Summers. Thanks. Thank you. Good talking to you. Visit www.greatwritersmedia.com. Email us at info at greatwritersmedia.com. Call us at 877-600-5469. Subscribe now.